It's hot out here. And bright. Not a lot can pass without explanation. Everything can be seen and heard. It's the outback in the heart of Australia. A place not a lot of people ever really see, ever really understand. The one thing a bushy will tell you, away from the noise and the lights of the city, you'll hear and see things out here that can take your breath away. This part of Australia, between Cloncurry and the Gulf Country, is about as remote as you can get. The people up here are straight shooters. They tell it as it is. Larry Dalhunty's one of those straight shooters. For more than 40 years, he's roamed the outback with his travelling boxing troupe and variety show. He's learned to live by his wits and live off the land. And he's had many a baffling experience. But the weirdest three days was sometime in the 1970s when I left Charter Stowers to perform at the Normanton races uh, in company with my daughter Judy and a boxer. Rewards are few in the bush. After a long, hot day's travelling, the group set up camp and relaxed under a seemingly peaceful night sky. Quiet air is good, quiet camp. That's good how it should be. But this night was to be anything but peaceful. When suddenly my daughter Judy screamed in terror and here was this object hovering about twice treetop level for just an instant and it took off at high speed lighting up the whole countryside. It takes a lot to unnerve a bushy. So despite the shock of the unknown, the Dalhunty troop decided the show had to go on. 24 hours later, a new campsite, hundreds of kilometres down the track. But what was to follow would make the events of the previous night seem almost normal. Well, it was between midnight and, uh, and dawn. I woke up, I don't know what woke me, it was a freezing cold night, and my head was under the blankets. And the blankets were gradually moving up and down, up and down. I thought, my God, that somebody here is going to club me over the head with a weapon. And after these blankets had moved up and down several times, I suddenly threw the blankets off and jumped out, ready to defend myself. And there was not a sign, not a sound. The bush was completely still, eerie stillness. Uh, no wind that could have been blowing the blankets. I just could never be able to explain what that was. The next morning, Larry decided he was better off keeping that experience to himself. That was until he joined the others and found out that he wasn't the only one who had trouble during the night. But as we were drinking tea at the campfire, Captain McLean said, he said, by gee, Larry, I had a weird experience last night. It just felt as though somebody was lifting my blankets up and down. Well, you know, it's a funny thing that you should say that because last night during the night, my blankets kept moving up and down like that and I was petrified. Larry and young McLean left it there, and the trio set off again, through the lonely Queensland bush. They were headed for another town, another show, and their third encounter with the unknown. This one, the most mysterious of all. What's that, Dad? Falling from the sky, there was thousands of cobwebs. And now, don't ask me to estimate the cobwebs in thousands. I couldn't. I'd have to go into millions. That's how many. For quite a while, Larry thought maybe it was the heat, that he was seeing things. But later, he was to hear that at Burnett Downs, some 450 miles away, more cobwebs were seen drifting down to earth. And at Charters Towers to the south, Robert Sweeney, a local alderman, was to confirm that it happened there too. 
Well, in the early 70s, I was out at the golf club playing golf, and uh, we were out on the, about the fourth or fifth green, and all of a sudden, this sort of uh, wind blew up, and this sort of queer stuff came over. We thought it was mist for a start, light rain or something, but uh, it turned out that it, turned, it seemed to be some sort of a cotton thing or cobwebby turnout. I believe that uh, it was hanging on uh, telephone lines and, uh, uh, you know, all around the town, so I don't think it was just at the golf club. I think it was nearly all over Charters Towers. So, how did the cobwebs get there? One report said they'd been blown in from South America by strong global winds. But John Thompson, a world expert on spiders, is not so sure. Well, there's something, certainly nothing unusual about spiders floating through the air on what we call gossamer, which are just little threads of silk. But in such tremendous numbers, to me, is really mind-boggling, and I, I have no explanation. These days, Larry's still on the road, way out west, still mystified by those events back in the 70s. His daughter, Judy, has settled down in North Queensland, but her mind is far from settled. The memories trouble her to this day, and even now she has nightmares, vivid dreams of blinding lights and cobwebs. It terrified me to see something like this. I mean, it's just unexplainable to see something like this and at, at quite a young age. Those ex three days will live with me to the end of my life. They were the weirdest three days that I can ever recall in all my travels. 